a dual reality, quotation clauses. That is from Steinberg. Selectively, Islamists pick up some elements in Islam and turn them into an ideological precept. Islamism indeed fulfills all the requirements of an ideology, but it goes beyond the purely ideological dimension and sacralizes the very essence of ideology. As taken from Jama'at al-Islam, with the following quote from Hassan al-Banna, sums up what the ideology of Islamists is. And I quote, this is from Hussein, uh, the Islamist. Allah is our Lord. Muhammad is our leader. The Quran is our constitution. Jihad is our way. Martyrdom is our desire. <laughs> Islamism, therefore, differs on the point from other totalitarian ideologies as it takes its legitimacy from a double source, ideology and religion. Owing to its double character, actions undertaken by Islamists are seen by them as religious duties. If we look at Said Qutb, he is very explicit, explicit when he declares, and this is what the ideology is all about, and I quote him, if Islam is a game to play the role of the leader of mankind, then it is necessary that the Muslim community be restored to its original form. So, how do Islamists interpret Islam? Is it the same way as you and I and other, I will call them normal Muslims? The Islamists argue that their set of selected elements is, in reality, the true and Secondly, so is the true Islam, and secondly, they are convinced that this true Islam is holistic and embraces all aspects of Muslims' lives in eternity. The holism of the Islamists is based on the absolute indivisibility of the Trinity, that is, Deen, Dunya, and Dawla. Religion, way of life, and government. This indivisibility is supposed to be permanent and eternal. Its ultimate goal boils down to the fulfillment of this mentioned triad on a global scale. So if we talk about the Blessed Trinity, the Holy Trinity, that is the Trinity um, I don't want to qualify it, but the Islamist trinity. That is, Deen, religion, dunya, way of life, and dawla, government. The three must be together. In fact, I was tempted to use the term in my paper, the inviolability of this trinity. But inviolability is only to that trinity. Yeah. Now, ideology of Islamists. What is their ideology? To Islamists, the existing world order is both wrong and repressive. It is wrong because the existing world does not correspond to Islamic principles. Islam is a political power no longer as predominant as it used to be in the past. The world is also considered repressive because non-Muslims occupy what the Islamists consider to be Muslim territory. Palestine, Chechnya, and of course, Kashmir. Or because Muslims live under severe repression from their own anti-Islamic governments. In order to get rid of these conditions of repression and wrongdoing, Islamists mainly propose two other ideal reference points. The first is the Medina model, e.g. society as it was shaped by Muhammad himself. The second is the classical era of the Caliphate, of 
Because the Caliphate is one of the longest political institutions in history, from 632 to 1934, when Mustafa Kemal uh, abrogated or abolished the Caliphate. Together, both the Sunni and the Shia Islamists share pride in, but also nostalgia for the disappeared past. Therefore, it is, far, it is fair to say that the restoration of the Caliphate today represents a general claim of all Islamists, independently of their sectarian membership. To the Islamists, therefore, the restoration of the Caliphate is the first step towards the Islamization of the world. How have they planned to achieve this goal? The Islamist spectrum of means to reach the above mentioned goal is quite wide, expanding from propagation, peaceful indoctrination, and political struggle to violent methods such as assassination, hostage taking, terrorist and suicide actions, and even massacre of civil populations. On violence, it seems right to say that the use of violence by Islamists remains non-concomitant. It is possible that, and that simultaneously, some Islamists use extremely violent methods in one part of the world, while other Islamists use non-violent methods in another part. This variation in patterns of action is determined by different factors, though I will not hesitate to say that the quietest attitude of some Islamists is an exception. But are all Islamists committed to using violence to achieve their goals? Is there a difference between Sunni and Shia concepts of Islamism? Some political, political analysts have identified three streams within Islamism, and I'll go through them very quickly. The first one is the political. There is the Islamic political movements, exemplified by the Society of the Muslim Brothers in Egypt, with its offshoots in Algeria, Kuwait, Jordan, Palestine, Sudan, and Syria. There are also locally rooted movements as the Justice and Development Party in Turkey and the Party for Justice and Development in Morocco, whose purpose is to attain political power at the national level. All these political movements now accept the nation state. They operate within, within its constitutional framework and there's still violence except under conditions of foreign occupation. The characteristic actor in this, stream, in this stream is the party political militant who makes an issue of Muslim misgovernment and social injustice and gives priority to political reform to be achieved by political action. I am not sure I can actually mention any of this type of political uh, Islamism in Africa, but I want, I want us to discuss. The second stream is the missionary. The Islamic mission of conversion, al dawa which exists in two main variants, exemplified by the highly structured tablighi movement, on the one hand, and the highly diffused Salafiyya on the other. We've been hearing about Salafiyya since yesterday. In both cases, Political power is not an objective. The overriding purpose is the preservation of the Muslim identity and the Islamic faith and moral order against forces of unbelief and the characteristic actors are missionaries, the Dua, as we were told yesterday, and the Ulama. To achieve their main goal, they make an issue of the corruption of Islamic values what they call Al-Qiyam Al-Islamiyya and, and the weakening of faith Al-Iman and give priority to a form of moral and spiritual rearmament that champions individual virtue as a condition of good government as well as 
of collective 